Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of stock-alike station parts expansion, which is being made by forum user Nearty. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game, as you might suspect from the name, is stock-alike space station parts, which is wonderful as who doesn't like building space stations, and plus stock-alike mods are just always wonderful because they feel like they should be in the game. And of course, I feel like I should have made this video ages ago as this is another one of those mods that I saw a long, long time ago but put off for other mods for this series and just never got back around to. But thankfully, just a couple of days ago, this mod finally updated to the latest 1.1.2 version of Kerbal Space Program, so it's now compatible again with the game. And, well, here we are now to take a look at it. So let's jump right on into the VAB and have a look at the currently... Ooh, boy. Oh, I'm hoping I counted this all right. 23 parts, I believe, that get added in by this mod, which, unfortunately, I couldn't find any any search result to type into here to get all of the parts, so I had to make a custom grouping down here, but we should be good to go with these, and we'll just start at the top and work our way down, so we'll begin here with a Clampotron docking module, which actually... Let's go back and grab a thing for size comparison. Now, this is, of course, a station parts pack, so let's grab the cupola module, as it's a very typical station part, and then head into here and back to that Clampotron docking module, which is, well, a pretty standard docking clamp, really. Nothing too special about it, except for its look. This thing is beautiful. As with most of the parts that you'll get into here, the modeling and texturing on this is pretty darn awesome, and it does also come with some docking lights on it, as you can see right there, to help guide yourself into any of your docking endeavors, and it's just... It's just nice. I really do love the look and feel of this thing. And then, of course, it has a larger brother, the Clampotron Senior Docking Module, which is pretty much the same thing, just made much, much bigger. Oh, boy, and look at all that extra RCS that thing has in there, which I probably should have pointed out. Both of these do have monopropellant in them. The smaller Clampotron with 40 monopropellant, and the Senior with 120 in there, so you'll have plenty of fuel for your RCS maneuver. And like with the smaller docking port, we have the lovely little lights on the side. They're not exactly bright, but they do add that just extra little bit of depth to the part that makes it really special, in my opinion. So that's quite cool. We'll drop both of those off and go to my favorite of the docking nodes, and that is the EVAC U8 service airlock. This thing is gorgeous gloriously beautiful. Look at all of the detailing on this, and of course, a usable hatch here so you can get Kerbals out of this thing. It does, as you can see here, have a crew capacity of two, so you can have a crew in there and doing docking, or not docking, but uh, crew reports rather, and it does have a docking port, which you may be wondering, where in the heck it is? Well, it's uh, it's right in here. If we right click and extend, that thing pops out and we have a lovely docking port that pops out from the side of the station. And it's just quite cool because it gives you a, another place to dock, of course, but also leaves an airlock open, has crew, and is just, just cool. And whenever you don't need any docking to be done, you just close it up and you're good to go. All right, let's chuck this one off. The next part we have is a mini observation window, which is quite nice, the Kerbal Max brand observation window, and this is a radially attached part, so you can, of course, attach it to a node, but you can also attach it through the side of things, which is quite nice for if we just skip along to a sort of more cylindrical part, you can pop it right on the side there so that it looks like a proper little observation port built into your station. A very nice little part. Part. Doesn't hold a crew member though, which is strange. I'd like to see the internal of that thing, but oh well, what are you gonna do? Now, the next two parts we have are both station cores. So these are unmanned, un oh, oh boy, let's, let's restart that word, 
unmanned command pods. In two different sizes, we have the small little uh, RGB003 and then the much larger RGB2 distributor, spaceship or station core rather, both of which are unmanned command pods as mentioned. They have their own built-in reaction wheel, SAS, and electrical charge, as well as some monopropellant in there, with the smaller core being 150 electric charge and 120 monopropellant, and a pretty light reaction wheel with only one pitch torque, and the larger station core having, oh boy, a lot more torque at 40, plus 850 electrical charge and 240 mod repellent. So quite a big difference in resources, of course, but then again, there is quite a big difference in size. So if we just pop those off of there, we'll go on to the next part, which is the Shanty Habitation Module, which holds a whole lot of Kerbals. Six, if you can see that number right there, all of which can do crew reports, excellent. And of course, is a very big 2.5 meter habitation module. I mean, it's basically just the hitchhiker container stacked on top of one another. And it's, it's quite nice, holds a lot of Kerbals, crew report and all very very good looking as well and who doesn't love that I love the detailing of the pipes etc down the side very cool now the next part we have is the PPD 24 observation module which holds four crew members also has 200 electric charge and does a scientific crew report and if we pop this baby on the top here for better looks it's beautiful and it's actually quite interesting on the internal view for this thing uh, your seats are like floating up against these glass windows and it's just kind of cool being able to see out of all of these things in every which direction it's uh it's quite the nice little part I do really enjoy it massive though quite massive as you can see here it fits uh, in the line technically with 2.5 but then juts out I think to the 3.75 or so roughly radius on the uh, actual sides of this. Very cool though part, I do love it. The next is the pressurized crew tube, which is just a structural part on the ship to add, you know, a, a crew tube to extend out your space station so then you can build off further. We then have a larger one here, as you can see. Very nice looking things. I like the uh, windows being slightly inset. Very, very nice. And of course the good detailing of the piping up and down the side. Very, very cool parts, and as you can see here, no other stats to them. Now, the next part we have is, of course, a multi-point station connector, and it's a big one. Very, very big one. It will fit, of course, 2.5 meter parts all around. Has a beautiful look to it. I do like the addition of the little uh, lights there. Or technically, I guess they're supposed to be windows, and they do light up, which I actually haven't pointed out on a lot of these parts. Uh, basically, anything with a window lights up, including this baby. If we go back to it real quick. Oh, yeah, that's nice and bright. Very good. Now, the next part we have is the PPD PTD adapter, which is, well, just sort of your average sort of style adapter does light up there and goes from the 2.5 meter to the 1.25 or no wait yes 1.2.5 to 1.25 I don't know where my brain's at today but there we go we then have the PPD to PXL adapter which goes from the 2.5 to the 3.75 yes that sounds about right and has a very nice, almost industrial sort of look to it. I really do quite enjoy it. Uh, the next is the PPD series flat adapter, which again goes from the same sort of size, the 2.5 to 1.25, but is much, you know, flatter as the name would intend, or uh, again, don't know where my brain is going. As the name would suggest, there's the proper sentence. Okay, so we didn't have a radial attachment point here, which if we grab another point to actually radially attach it to, we can see that this BZ-17, you know, fits right at home. Now, of course, it does have attachment points on it, so you can't just hook it on like that, but it is, of course, designed to create a nice radial attachment po point for you in the same styling as the rest of the parts, so it's quite a nice thing. We then have another version of the pressurized radial attachment module, just, uh, you know, bigger much, much bigger. In the 2.5 meter size, which as you can see, if you don't have the, uh, you know, the angle snap on there, uh, it kind of 
can go off the side a bit, but with the proper angle snapping on, fits quite nicely in line, shows a little bit on the side, but that also is mainly due to uh, this uh, core here having this little indention in the center. Let's pop that off, and of course you, and then we have two more pressurized crew tubes that don't actually hold any crew, just add a structural element to the craft. And there we go, again, nice detailing with the piping going down the side, a very cool, and of course, windows that do light up. Chuck that off, we have it in a smaller variety with just the one singular window, but you'll still find the pipes lovingly placed over there. We then have another multi-point station connector, this one being much smaller though, in just the 1.25 meter size. Again, a very good look to it. I do really love the modeling and texturing in this mod. It is superb. Now, the next part we have is the Deep Space Habitation Module, and this is big. This is a big part. Real big part. <laughs> So as you can see, it is the 3.75 meters in size and holds eight crew members in here. Eight crew. Sadly, the interior view for this, it does have its own interior view, which we'll go take a look at all these interior views here in a moment. Uh, it has one, but it doesn't seem to have gotten very far. So it's there, but it's untextured. It's unmodeled, really. Uh, hopefully that'll be improved over time. But for right now, it's, it's just nice because it fits eight crew members and it does look beautiful from the outside. I do love the look of this thing. And, of course, has the crew report you can do. We then have a uh, pressurized conical storage container, as you can see here. Functions as another adapter from the 3.75 to uh, 2.5. Lights up as you can see here, lovely, and of course it does have a crew report and holds four Kerbals. A lot of parts holding a lot of people in this thing. And then our last two parts is first the extra planetary octo aperture module, much like this cupola, except bigger much bigger and I love the interior of this thing again it doesn't seem to be finished but it is still uh, quite a beautiful little interior of it you have the four crew members all sitting around a table in there it's quite nice I do really like it it's uh, very cool and of course is a command pod with a minimum of one crew max of four 12 reaction torque on that the crew report 200 electric charge and 50 mono propellant there we go and the final part is a service airlock excellent there we go it does have some light so you can see where to come back in with your Kerbal and of course it does hold one crew member has the lights requiring electricity does the crew report and uh, ju again just a very beautiful detailed part I do love the look of this thing got the little keypad on it and everything it is quite lovely. So that is all of the different parts that make up the stock alike station parts expansion. So let's go take a look at a quick little station that I threw together before the episode here today. And to just give you an idea of the sort of things that you could do with this mod, given more time and more creativity than I have. And here we go. We have a lovely station with that beautiful observation module over here. Uh, we've got these really cool docking ports. Again, I love these service airlocks that this thing just pops right out. Oh, look at it come out slowly. It's beautiful. Got another one down here, of course. Which we can extend outward. We have the tiny little cupola modules there. And just all these great parts. And if we actually do look at the interiors of these things from the outside, you can see, again, the sort of simplicity that I was talking about in this uh, habitation module here. And the cool look of the crew all sitting around that table there. All very, very nice parts. And all told, I think this space station holds like, oh god, I think 34 Kerbals or something, with just this few of parts. It's, uh, it's pretty glorious indeed. So let's actually take a look at the interiors of these things. So let's start with the Jebediah in here. And this is that, uh, you know, the main module up top, the larger cupola. I do love that they're all sitting around this table, but sadly, no instruments to speak of. Hopefully those will get added in the future. Let's go to our next Kerbal, cycle through these guys they're all really happy to be in there and then this is the habitation module this is what I was talking about of this one being or seeming to not be completely finished because it's it's uh, it's just a flat interior with nothing else in here 
which is sad. Hopefully that will get fixed in the future. Cycle through these guys. There we go. We are in... Oh boy, I'm not sure which module, honestly. But uh, again, another simplistic interior. Not a whole lot of work done so far. Hopefully it will improve in the future. Uh, we got a couple of these fellas in here. And then this is... I'm trying to remember which module I'm in right now. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, it's the the service one that we were looking at just towards the end. The four Kerbals inside that goes from the 3.75 to the 2.5 meter. I'm forgetting the name of it, but a nice little module. It seems like it it's had a little bit more work done. There's a bit more modeling in here. Hopefully more will be done in the future. Let's cycle through these guys. This is the main sort of habitat module, which seems to be where all the work has been done, though uh, clearly not finished, as you can see by that window being open right there. But I do like that it it uh, it does have a lot more things added to it. I do love the chalkboard there. It certainly does appear, though, like it was just the typical hitchhiker container doubled and with some things changed you can see up there we do have beds up that way let's cycle through these guys and up to there excellent and with some lanterns added in so again hopefully more will be done to it soon but this one certainly has had a bit more work which is a lovely and then these are the two guys cramped inside of one of the docking or the service module rather with the airlock and uh that is another airlock Yes, and then we're back here. Okay, so that... Cycle through. Yes, ah, here's where I was wanting to get to. This is that lovely observation platform that is just so beautiful. It's a great view from any of your Kerbals in here. Being able to see through all of these windows all around is quite impressive. Very impressive indeed. It's probably my favorite interior. Not a whole lot of texturing and modeling, but honestly, for this part, it really doesn't need it. Because it's, it's all about the windows. All about those glorious windows. Though I just noticed that post it note what does it say please fix this crack well we should probably leave this room quickly and there we go this is the last interior and this is that one lonely Kerbal that is at that airlock it's just kind of watching the pressure that's that seems to be his job in here in this cramped tiny little quarters but there we are that is all of our Kerbals for the interior views there lovely back to the exterior it's just a a lovely set of parts. I really do love all of them, frankly. They're, they add a whole lot of depth and complexity to space station building that, frankly, is always welcome. And there's just a beautiful assortment of things. Just I hope the interiors get worked on more. So if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, which I would definitely suggest you go and do, take a look at the link in the description as always. But that is going to be it for today's video, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed. And of course, they do come back for the next one we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.